Morning everybody, um, welcome to today's class. I hope you had a nice day yesterday, let's get started. So we take our stretch, oh I'm really far away today, let me just adjust that camera. So we're doing stretch, so curving those arms. Um, you know, drop the head forward around the back and pull that tummy in. You can do the standing or kneeling. Relaxing there, take the hands behind, pulling back, lifting that upper body. Looking up towards the ceiling. And again, interlace those fingers in front, curve the arms, dropping forwards through that gap. Relaxing there, take the hands behind, reaching back, lifting up. Okay, from there you're on your backs. I'm just gonna raise this camera up so you can see me a bit better. So as you lay on your back, I want you to be in a neutral position. With the knees bent, feet on the floor. And you've got a slight curve underneath your lower spine. So just enough space for us to get part of your hand underneath there. And as you're looking up to the ceiling, we're going to take nice deep breaths in through the nose, out through a pursed lip. Breathing in and out. As you're taking nice deep breaths, make sure those hips are level. So imagine you have a torch on each hip bone and they're shining up parallel to one another onto the ceiling. Keeping the upper body nice and relaxed. Those shoulders are really open and away from the ears. The weight is evenly placed to your feet. So big toe, little toe and heel. And you're just gently tightening through the tummy. Next time that you breathe out, I want you to tuck the pelvis under, so you're flattening your lower back into the mat. Take a deep breath in to stay, exhale to release out to neutral, tucking under to flatten, holding there, releasing out to neutral. So as you're tucking under, you're trying to find that nice, strong, flat back position. Using your tummy muscles and your pelvis to help you to move. So try and avoid squeezing the bottom.
On this next one, we're going to hold. So we're tucking under to hold that flat back. So you should have that back nice and firmly pressed into the floor if you can. And holding that position, we start to tighten in the pelvic floor. So as you breathe out, you're tightening all the way in with the pelvic floor. Inhale to release. Exhale to tighten. Inhale to release. So thinking of the sensation of stopping a wee mid-flow. So as you're tightening, you should feel as though your tummy muscles are working harder and that your back is slightly flatter into the mat. We're going to half this contraction to 50% tightening in the pelvic floor as you exhale, inhale to release. So you want to keep this relaxed position in the upper body. Shoulders away from the ears, chest is nice and open. If you're feeling really tense here, just turn your palms up towards the ceiling. Pull the tummy all the way down towards the spine. And keep that weight even through your feet. So remember, big toe, little toe, and heel. We're going to half one last time, so 20 to 25% tightening. So this should feel like a very gentle lifting. Something that you could sustain throughout any exercise if you needed to. It's just working in the background. Your flat back position should feel nice and strong. You're using your tummy muscles and your pelvic floor to help you to stay there. We're going to bring those legs up into tabletop. So you'll do these above your hips. Shins are parallel to the ceiling. From here we're going into toe taps. You're tapping down and lift. Tapping down and lift. You're swapping sides each time. Nice deep breaths. Your strong flat back positions, your tummy and your pelvic floor are working together to keep you in that position on the mat. Shoulders are relaxed, the chest is nice and open. Remember you can turn those palms to the ceiling if you need to. Two more on each side, we're tapping down and lift, down and lift, one more on each side, tap down and lift, tap down 
and lift. Relaxing there, hugging those knees in towards your chest. And then we're going onto our hands and knees while stretch through our back. So as you come into your position, take your hands over your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. Tummy should be already nice and tightened. As you breathe out, we want to tuck the pelvis under so we start to curve the spine. Arching the back, we're dropping the head. Take a deep breath in to stay. Exhale to release back out to neutral. The pelvis goes first, the spine follows. And we're lifting the head. Tucking under to curve. Arch the back, drop the head, we hold, we're releasing out through the spine, piece by piece, and the head lifts. So we want to get lots of movement through the back. You're working into each section of your spine, piece by piece. So if there are any areas of the back that feel stiff or sore, you're just taking your time to move through each vertebrae. One by one. Nice deep breaths. As you're tucking under, curving the back, and you're pulling that tummy all the way in. We're releasing out through the spine and we're letting the shoulders come away from the ears. I'm going to take two more here. We're tucking under to curve, arching the back, dropping the head we hold. From here releasing out through the spine, piece by piece. To lift the head, you've got one more here. Tuck under to curve. Arching the back. Dropping the head, we hold. Releasing out. Shoulders down. Lifting the head. From there, we push back into a shell stretch. Bottom to the feet, reaching those arms out in front. Good, then we're going to go on our sides. So as you're laying on your side, same as we always do, we want those knees bent, legs on top of one another, your head is resting down, and those arms are nice and long, palm to palm. You can, of course, have something under your head if you want to. So from here, we're gonna lift this top arm up and your fingertips will point to the ceiling. Taking the head with you, we start to twist away. You're holding that stretch as you're opening up in the chest. Before lifting back up and over. To come down palm to palm. The top arm lifts, fingertips point to the ceiling. Take the head with you. We're twisting away. Holding here to stretch. The 
slowly swing all the way up and over to come down palm to palm. So we're keeping those legs glued together so that as you twist away you're getting this movement through your waist. Taking nice deep breaths. Reaching the arm along, stretching your fingertips all the way into your armpit. So you get this nice open chest position. We're going to look at that hand for as long as we can. So you're now getting a nice range of movement through the neck. We've got two more on this side. We're lifting up, fingertips point to the ceiling. Take the head with you. We're twisting away, we're holding here as we stretch, we're lifting back up and over to come down palm to palm, this is your last one on this side, lifting up fingertips to the ceiling, taking the head with you, we're twisting away, holding here, then lifting back up and over to so come down palm to palm. So now we're switching sides. So you can either roll over to face the other way or switch the end of the mat that you want to lay out. So again, taking those knees bent legs together, arms are nice and long, palm to palm, rest that head down. The top arm lifts, fingertips point to the ceiling. Taking the head with you, we're twisting away. Holding here, we stretch. Before lifting back up and over to come down palm to palm. Top arm lifts, fingertips point to the ceiling. Taking the head with you. Twisting away, we hold before lifting back up and over to come down palm to palm. So we're keeping those legs glued together and grounded. Remember that's giving you this twist through your waist. Nice deep breaths. The arm is reaching and stretching from the fingertips all the way into your armpit. We're looking at this hand for as long as we can. Taking a good range of movement through the neck. We have two more here. We're lifting up, fingertips point to the ceiling. Take the head with you. We're twisting the way we hold. Before lifting back up and over to come down palm to palm. One more here. We're lifting up, fingertips point to the ceiling. Taking the head with you, we're twisting away. Holding here as a stretch. 
for lifting back up and over. Coming down palm to palm. From there, take a nice full body stretch. You can roll onto your back to do this if you want to. If you need a drink, then grab one. If not, then stay on your back for the next move. So we get on our backs. And knees bent, feet on the floor. And not a slight curve on your lower back, so we're in a neutral position. Hands are resting down beside you. You're taking a nice deep breath in to nod the head, chin to chest. As you exhale, we're lifting the shoulders from the floor, reach those arms nice and long. Take a deep breath in to stay. Exhale to control back down. Chin to chest. Lifting up, reach those arms, we hold. Control back down. to bring the tummy all the way down to give you this lift. We're using our chin to chest position to relax the neck. So big nod of the head before you lift those shoulders away from the floor. Tightening in the tummy. those arms along, get the shoulders away from the ears. We're using the pelvic floor here, so gently tightening. We've got two more here, then we'll add some extra movement in. Chin to chest, lifting up. We hold. Control back down. Chin to chest, lifting up. Control back down. So from here, we're going to add in a little pulses. So still going chin to chest. Lifting those shoulders away. We're going to pulse up four times. Pulsing up, two, three, four. Control back down. Chin to chest, lifting up. We pulse, two, three, four. Control back down. You're still using your chin to chest position to relax the neck. You can, of course, support the head here, but remember your hands are behind the head and you still want to use that nodding position. Just make sure you've got that relaxed control through the neck and the shoulders. Tummy needs to stay really tight as you add those pulses in. Shoulders down. We have two more lots here. Chin to chest, lifting up. We pulse. Two, three, four. Control back down. Last one. Chin to chest, lifting up. We pulse. Two, three, four. Control back down, hug those knees into your chest. 
Good, from now we're gonna be on either the knees or laying on your fronts. If you don't like bearing weight on the knees, I'll have to come forwards a little bit so I don't cut off my head. So if you don't like bearing weight through the knees, um, then you can lay on your front, legs are nice and long and behind you, and your hands will be mat with the part in line with your ears, and you'll be doing um, chest lifts, uh, which if you've done a class with me, before or if you've done these from the beginning you have done before if not you're coming on to your knees i'll come a bit further forwards so with this position you want to keep your knees quite close together so think underneath the hips if you suffer from cramping through that lower leg tuck those toes under i think i'm going to sneeze you want to have those shoulders nice and relaxed but keep that chest really open tummy should be nice and tightened you want to try and avoid this really exaggerated position that I've got in my back. So if you know you're quite curved through your lower back, tuck your bottom under a little bit, which will help to stop this position as much. I'm massively exaggerating, none of you will really like that. But if you do know you suffer from that real curve, have a little tuck under just to protect that back. I just noticed from looking at my really awful posture. Take a little tuck in of your chin so your neck stays nice and relaxed and you're tall in the rest of the upper body. As you breathe in, pull this tummy in as you're leaning back through the knees. Breathing in. Exhale, squeeze your bottom to lift up. Kneeling back, oh, not kneeling, leaning, sorry, back. Coming up forwards. Squeezing with that bottom, driving forwards. So the tummy stays tightened the whole time. The squeeze in your bottom and the exhale is to drive yourself forwards. If you are tucking under slightly, you'll find you're a little bit squeezed here all the time, that doesn't matter. Chest stays open. Nice deep breaths. We've got two more like this, we're leaning back. Last one, leaning back. Okay, so we're going to add a little pause. We did this yesterday, and you're going to do the same if you're on your front. So if you are on your front, keeping those forearms down, you're going to lift halfway, pause, lift up, pause, come all the way down. So if you're on your knees, and if your lean is small, that doesn't matter. It's just halfway of wherever you're going to. So you're gonna lean halfway, you're halfway back. Hold there, feel that in those legs. Then lean the rest of the way back, hold. Come all the way forward. You should feel this fire up in your legs. If you're feeling it in your back, it means you're leaning through your hips and we want to be leaning through the knees. So if you look at my body, if you're unsure, my whole body is moving as one. So my hips are going with the legs, okay? So you're leaning halfway back, hold. Halfway back again, hold. Squeeze back up. Try and still have that exhale on the way up. So you're leaning halfway back, hold. Lean again, hold. Come all the way up. Tighten that tummy as you lean. Hold. Lean. Hold. Squeeze in that bottom. Fire up the front of those legs. Two more. Lean back. Hold. Lean back. Hold. This is your last one, leaning back, hold, leaning back, hold, 
Good. From there, come back into a shell stretch position. Bottom to the feet. Reach those arms out in front. Then we're going to be on our backs for the hundred. So if you want that drink, then grab one. And from there, we're on our backs. So, um, just while we're talking through, take your knees, bent and feet on the floor. You'll want to be in a nice, strong flat back position. So really tucked under and losing that gap. From there, I'm gonna want you to have those legs in tabletop. So remember, you're getting the knees above your hips, your shins parallel to the ceiling. If you wanna make that position more challenging, all you're doing is taking your legs so that they're going away from you and towards the floor. But your shins should stay parallel to the ceiling. It'll just be your upper leg that will move away. If you're unsure on that, just stay in that boxed tabletop position. From here, you're looking up at the ceiling at the moment. If your neck is really sore, then stay with that. If not, you're nodding the head, lifting the shoulders. Your arms are long and your palms are facing the ceiling. So your emphasis is now on the pushing up of the arms rather than the pushing down. So think about as if your arms are in water, there's some resistance against them. It's the same breath pattern, five as you breathe in and five as you breathe out, and it will be the same amount, 100 repetitions. From there, your hands are behind your head. Remember, your legs are still in tabletop. You're going into two sets of eight, looking sit up towards those legs. We're then going to stay in that same position with the legs. You're going to go straight into two sets of eight, reaching across towards the knee, alternating the hands. Keeping one hand behind the head for that support. From there, you're going to hug those knees in and then come into a full body stretch. Okay, we'll all go together. I'm sure you'll all do fabulously. So just find that strong flat back, losing that gap underneath. Chin to chest. No, sorry. I always forget the legs now, I'm really sorry. Make sure you've got a strong flat back, then lift those legs up to tabletop. So knee above the hip, shin parallel to the ceiling. It's because I'm not doing it and I forget it, I'm really sorry. From there, chin to chest, lifting those shoulders. Arms are long, palms facing the ceiling. We're pushing up as we inhale, two, three, four, five, and exhale, two, three, four, five, and inhale, two, three, four, five, and exhale, two, three, four, five. Tummy in, two, three, four, five, and exhale, two, three, four, five, and inhale, two, three, four, five, and exhale, two, three, four, five, pelvic floor, two, three, four, five, and exhale, two, three, four, five, halfway, two, three, four, five, and exhale, two, three, four, five, and inhale, two, three, four, five, and exhale, two, three, four, five, tummy in, two, three, four, five, and exhale, two, three, four, five, two more, two, three, four, five, and exhale, two, three, four, five, last one, two, three, four, Five and exhale, two, three, four, five. Stay here, your legs should still be in tabletop. Your hands come behind the head. You've got sit ups for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Eight more. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. One, we're going straight into twisting across for eight, swap sides, seven, six, breathe, five, four, three, two, one, last set, eight, seven, six, tummies in, five, four, three, two, one, from there, hug those knees into your chest, and then bring yourself into a full body stretch. Good, well done, fantastic. And we're gonna come up to sitting and then do a stretch. Okay, so for our stretches today, we're gonna to do the same as what we did um, yesterday. 
I'm just going to come and sit up nice and high. So if you didn't join in yesterday, it doesn't matter. We're just going to basically do a stretch forwards through the legs, which should work the underneath of the legs, a little bit through the back, excuse me, and hips. So quite a nice all over body one, really. So from here, you want both legs to be out nice and long in front of you. You should just have your bottom on your mat. My head is nearly out of the shot. And try to, if you can, have these feet flexed. So you're pushing your toes up towards you. And what that's going to do is really stretch down the back of your calves, um, especially if you know they're really tight or you suffer quite badly from cramp, it's quite a nice stretch to do. I then want you to lift the arms out in front of you so they're nice and long and lifted. Try to make sure those shoulders stay down. You're going to lean forwards from your hips. So you're not rolling down, you're keeping tall, and from the hips you're hinging forward as far as you can. When you can't lean forward any further, then you're around in the back, you're reaching your hands to whichever part of your leg or foot that you can grab hold of. So it doesn't matter if you're on the shin or the ankle, if you can grab hold of those toes or touch those toes, you can add a little pull in to increase the stretch in the back of the legs. So your legs are nice and close together. And we're taking our nice deep breaths in and out. Breathing in and out. So just really controlling the breathing here. Remember that lengthy exhale. Dropping that head. I want you to think about getting your nose to your knee. You might be way off of that. But that's the feeling and the weightedness I want you to have through the upper body. And then from there I want you to lift the arms away, but still have a sense of reaching and dropping down. So if you were able to touch your feet before, I now need to think about reaching past them. If you were on the shin or the ankle, you're trying to reach towards base feet. You shouldn't be grabbing hold of anything, you're reaching the arms long and away. So now you're having that sense of lifting up. If you can, you're still flexing through those feet. Reaching those arms along. Just let those arms relax down. Just slowly bring yourself up to sitting. We need to give his legs a shake. I've got really bad things in it in my legs. Good, from there, keeping one leg out long and in front, the other leg is going to bend. So if you, I know it's difficult to see when I'm wearing black, but if you can see my hand tracing over my leg, that's my knee and my foot is in here. So you want your foot towards the inner thigh if you can. Don't worry if that's quite a loose open position. My foot's more like to my knee. So the tighter that you can go, hold that position. So it doesn't matter if it's far away from you as long as it's the closest that you can get it towards you, if that makes any sense whatsoever. We do exactly the same stretch, but you've just got the one leg out in front. So if you can flex, draw that, that toe in towards you. So you're stretching underneath the bottom of the leg. Arms are nice and long, you're hinging forwards. And when you need to drop in that head, reaching down. So if you can touch the toe then do, if not you're on the shin or the ankle, really dropping that head, breathe, So you should feel a really nice stretch underneath that calf. Really good to stretch the legs individually. Often one is tighter than the other. And again, we're gonna lift the arms and reach further if we can. That should really increase the stretch in your leg. It should feel quite nice. Nice might be the wrong word. It should feel a, like a good stretch. Better to relax down, bring yourself back up. I'm just going to swap the legs. So 
the other leg is going to lengthen and we've got that leg bent in. So remember you've got the foot in towards the side of the leg wherever you can go. So this is my least flexible side. Probably will be yours as well because we always go to our dominant side first. Hinging forwards, reaching those arms, flex that foot. And you need to drop that head and reach down. So if you can, you're touching those toes, pulling them towards you. If not, you're holding onto the shin or the ankle. Stretching underneath that calf. Taking those deep breaths. And if you can, lifting the arms up, reaching further away, really increasing that stretch in the back of the leg. Take your time to just come up. Let the legs out long, give them a shake just while you bring yourself back in to your centre, especially if you're not used to those deep breathing exercises. From there, just bring both of your feet in together like a frog position. I'm just going to bounce those legs up and down. And that's just to really get into the hip. So it's just nice and tall, there's no weight or pulling anywhere. We're just bouncing, 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 bouncing. Get those shoulders down. Take the bounce out. Take hold of those feet and pull yourself down towards the legs. Here is where you can now push those elbows into the sides of the legs if you want to increase that stretch. There we're going to be on our hands and knees. So we're going to do a mixture of arm and leg stuff today. So if you usually use weights for your arms you will want them. So just something quite light. I'm just using a two kilo dumbbell here. You can use, I would say, well it depends how strong you are to be fair. If you're quite strong and you know you can lift heavy then that's fine but don't push it too far. You're not used to using weights. A couple of kilos is fine, or a can from the cupboard will also be fine. But ultimately, if you don't want to use weights, that's also cool. It doesn't matter, you'll still be working. We've done this one quite a lot over the last few weeks. I'll show you front on and side on so you can see a really good um, view of the arm in all of the positions it needs to be in. So you'll be in a hands and knees four point kneeling position. If you suffer from really sore wrists, and remember that you've got um, planks at the end of the class that I would prefer if you were on long arms for this week, then you can drop yourself all the way down to your forearms. All you're going to do here is restrict the range of movement that you have. You'll still be working. So what we're going to be doing is lifting one arm up from the floor and bringing it into the side of the hip. So from a side on view, this is what your arm is going to be doing. But what I want is for the elbow to be tucked in. So if I show you front on, you can see that you can't actually see my elbow because it's tucked in. So what we're doing is called a row. You're just doing it on your knees. It's this movement. As you're doing this movement, I want you to squeeze your el push your elbow towards your back, towards your other elbow. And that should mean that you'll feel your shoulder blades start, excuse me, the muscles on your shoulder blades start to tighten. So we're working the upper back. And it'll just help to keep this really nice open position. If you're doing this, you're opening up your chest, but we're just doing one at a time. So you're getting that open position, okay? So we do 10 on one side, 10 on the other side. Then we'll just roll up the wrists, have a very tiny rest, 10 on one side, 10 on the other. 
So I'll do the first set of 10 like this facing you with my weights and then I will swap and do a side view. So if you are still a little bit confused, there'll be a different viewpoint for you. So you only need one weight here, grabbing hold of that. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna be pulling in and down, lift and down, lift those shoulder blades in and down, and down, lift and down. Halfway, lift and down, lift and down. Breathe, lift and down. Last two, lift and down, lift and down. Then you're just swapping sides. So if you're using a weight, swap the hand. Here we go again, lifting up and down, lift and down. We're lifting up and down, breathe, lift and down, and down, halfway, lift and down, lift and down, lift and down, last two, lift and down, lift and down. So if you need to just give those wrists a little shake out, if you haven't been already, make sure this time that you're really pulling that tummy in, nipping the shoulders, pull the tummy in. Here we go, 10 more. Lifting up and down, up and down. We're lifting up and down, lift and down. Breathe and down, halfway, lift and down, lift and down, lift and down. Last two, lift and down, lift and down. Swapping sides, the last time we're doing this, lifting up and down, lift and down, you're lifting up and down, lift and down, lift and down, halfway, lift and down, lift and down, and down, last two, lift and down, lift and down, roll those wrists out, well done, I really like that one, I think it's one of my favourites. Okay, we're going to be staying on our hands and knees. Again, you can drop yourself down to those forearms. This time we're working on legs, so it doesn't matter as much if you're down here. But remember, we're not crossing over those hands in any way. They stay parallel. The forearms stay parallel. So you're not crossing in, you're not opening out. I don't mind if the hands are in fists or here, but don't let those arms cross. Otherwise, you're on long arms again. It's completely up to you. If you can, take some time bearing weight in the wrist. It's the only way to build that strength up. So little, when you can, will help with that. So we're gonna be doing our donkey kicks. We've again done these quite a lot before. Um, ten on each side. Rest, ten on each side. So they're not very glamorous. Um, I'll just quickly show you so that you can remember. So you're lifting the leg up towards the ceiling. And if you can, ideally, you want a right angle position. I cannot get that position at the moment just because I'm suffering a lot from um, pubic synthesis dysfunction during my pregnancy. But if you can get that right angle position, so like that with your leg, then that's where you want to be going. If you're not, it doesn't matter. I'm not, and I'm still, I can still feel it working. Um, but just that's where you want to be going if you can. So, 10 on one side, 10 on the other. Sorry if you hear me grimacing as we do it. Here we go, we're lifting up and down. Lift and down, the tummy's in and down. Breathe and down, halfway. Lift and down, lift and down, lift and down. Two more this side, up and down, up and down. Other leg, here we go. Lifting up and down. Lift and down, we're lifting up and down. Lift and down, lift up and down. Halfway, lift and down. Lift and down, lift and down. Last two, lift and down, lift and down. Relax there. Roll through his wrists if you need to. 
Good, we've got each side one more time, 10 repetitions. Remember, you can come down to the forearms if you need to. Here we go. Lifting up and down, up and down. We're lifting up and down, up and down. Lifting up and down, halfway, lift and down, lift and down, lifting up and down, two more, up and down, up and down, swapping sides, lifting up and down, up and down, we're lifting up and down, up and down, lifting up and down, halfway, lift and down, lift and down, lift and down, last two, lift and down, lift and down, Roll through those wrists. Good, well done. It's nice to do a little bit of a different movement. I know we've done them probably about once a week for the last few weeks, but just working different muscles is really good so that your body doesn't get used to what you're training. Still on those hands and knees. This time tuck those toes under. Let's all drop down actually onto our forearms here because I really want lengthened arms for the planks if we can. So remember again, same as I said just a short time ago, keep those forearms parallel. So don't let them cross or open out. Loads of you will naturally want to do this. And I fall under that category as well. But what that does is it really rounds your shoulders and lets you start to collapse to the upper body. Or you might already be a little bit rounder than that, just feels more natural. Here, just helps to keep those shoulders in quite an open position. Um, and that's what we want generally day to day. I know sometimes I do change that on occasion, um, but generally day to day, that's what we want. So from here, just tuck those toes under. You can be fists here if you prefer, that's fine. As you breathe out, I want to pull the tummy in. You're pressing into your arms and your feet to lift your knees off just an inch or so. <sighs> Inhale down. Exhale to lift. Inhale down, lifting up and down. Do you think tummy is lifting you here? Your arms and your feet are just there for support. You want to look straight down towards that mat, so don't let the head drop. Don't try and lift the head up too far. All you're doing there is putting pressure through the neck. Nice deep breaths. Lifting up and down. Four more. Lifting up and down. We lift and down. Last two. Lifting up and down. Lifting up and down. Oh, I'm really sorry if that noise is distracting. I think one of my neighbours is drilling. But we're near the end, so it's fine. Okay, so going into our planks. So I want everyone to try and be on long arms. If you really have to be on your forearms, it's fine. Um, you obviously need to do what works well for you. And if you suffer from really sore wrists, then that's fine. But if not, you're on long arms. Um, if you did these yesterday, it's the same thing. So we're going to go into, if you're on your forearms, today we're going to be really close together. So literally ignoring everything I've just said about your forearms. But we want that narrow position. If you're on long arms, I want you to make a triangle. So it's your thumbs and your index fingers that touch. We did this when we were laying on our fronts right at the very beginning of lockdown when I was still able to lay on my front. Or if you've been in class, you would have definitely done these with me before. So bring your triangle or your close together forearms to the front of your mat. You're gonna be taking that leg out nice and long behind you, your weight is in the toes. And from there, you're gonna find a really strong plank position. We're gonna bend the elbows, straighten them, and that's your plank. So what we're doing is a press up, but in a narrow arm position. We're gonna keep going here while I'm talking you through. So stepping back, weight in the toes, the other leg comes to meet it. Tuck yourself under, find that nice strong plank position. We're gonna bend and straighten, 
relax in there. Keep taking those at your own pace. So these press-ups are called tricep press-ups. So working this underneath part of your arm here, which loads of us feel really insecure about. So it's really good for strengthening this. This muscle doesn't work unless you actively make it work, okay? So that's what we're doing here. If you're feeling like your depth in your press-up is nowhere near as much as the wider arm press-ups, that's because that muscle will be weaker than your biceps and your chest, and so it will feel harder. It doesn't matter if that bend is small. I want some bend and straightening. A push-up or a press-up is pushing or pressing up from wherever you are. So if you're really tiny bend, you're still pressing yourself up. We all have to start somewhere, and this is the only way you're going to build that strength by starting small and then increasing it as we go. Remember though that it is the press up we're looking for. So if you bend your chest, if you bend your chest to the floor, but you can't lift yourself back up from that, you're not doing a press up, you're just collapsing to the mat, okay? So really think about keeping that to a manageable amount to be able to get that push up again from the floor. So we're stepping back, stepping back, tucking under. Get that squeeze in the bottom, tighten the tummy. Bend, straighten, relax. Stepping back, stepping back. Nice long plank. Remember to breathe. And relax. We're going to do two more of these. Keep them nice and strong. Step back, step back. Find your strong plank first. Then we're going to bend, straighten, relax. Last one here. Step back, step back. Strong plank. Bend, straighten, and relax. Good. Roll through those wrists. Really well done if you manage those press ups. From here, bring yourself up to standing or kneeling, whatever is comfortable for you, just for our end little stretch. I'm just going to take a nice roll back of the shoulders. Wow, that hour's gone really quick. And forwards, roll those shoulders. arms up nice and wide we're lifting up we're stretching over other side lifting up stretching over one more time on each side we're lifting up and over we're lifting up and over and relaxing there. Thank you so much for joining me for today's class. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've had a lovely day yesterday and enjoy today. And I will hope to see lots of you for the rest of the week. Take care. Bye.